Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. AMA doesn't want the FAA to include model aircraft in UAS regulations. For Flight Mobile version 6.7 adds new features. And Europe's automated transfer vehicle program successfully ended. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. Following a preliminary review of the FAA's outline for the proposed rules addressing the commercial use of unmanned aircraft, the Academy of Model Aeronautics, known as the AMA, said in a statement that, quote, regulations relating to the commercial use of small unmanned aircraft systems should not apply to the longstanding educational hobby of flying model aircraft, end quote. The statement also went on to say, quote, AMA's 78 years of experience in managing and overseeing the operation of model aircraft shows that a voluntary community-based approach to managing this activity is far more effective in ensuring enthusiasts operate their aircraft in a safe and responsible manner, end quote. AMA has joined with the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International, the Small UAV Coalition, and other members of the small UAS and hobby industry in launching the No Before You Fly campaign. This educational outreach has been widely accepted and heralded as a beneficial and effective means of educating the new SUAS enthusiasts and addressing inappropriate or improper use of the technology. ForeFlight has done it again as they roll out new wireless connectivity features in the latest mobile version 6.7 to allow the software to interface with Dynon Avionics Skyview system. The integration with Dynon expands the ForeFlight Connect capability. It contains features that allow ForeFlight Mobile to connect a portable and installed avionics to enable capabilities like flight plan transfer, ADS-B weather, and more. The Scratchpad view has also been updated to provide much more capability with new templates. Scratchpads are integrated into the ForeFlight Sync system, so all your notes are automatically backed up across your iPads. In the Maps view, a global graphical winds aloft layer that shows wind barbs on the map for altitudes from 3,000 to 54,000 has also been added. For Flight Mobile version 6.7 is now available on the App Store. After the break, European Space Station Resupply Program concludes. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, send us an email to news-by at aero-news.net. The final European cargo spacecraft has made a fiery return to Earth, ending the European Space Station resupply program. Tom Patton reports. When the spacecraft broke up on re-entry as planned just after 3 Eastern Time Monday afternoon, It marked the end of the Automated Transfer Vehicle, or ATV, program. The program has served the station with the most complex space vehicle ever developed in Europe, achieving five launches in six years following its 2008 debut. ATVs delivered some 70,000 pounds of supplies over the course of their five missions. They boosted the station to raise its orbit numerous times, and similarly moved it out of the way of space debris. The vehicles demonstrated European mastering of automated docking, a technology that is vital for further space exploration. For Airborne Unlimited, I'm Tom Patton. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update, highlighting news and information 
about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. This week, we have the honor of introducing you to an organization known as the International Council of Air Shows, or simply ICAS. It's an organization that may not jump to the forefront of your thinking when it comes to aviation, but if you've attended any air show, there's a good chance you've been right in the middle of ICAS and didn't even know it. The early days of air shows were commonly referred to as barnstorming. Pilots would simply show up as individuals put on an aerial demonstration, and commonly sell airplane rides. It may sound romantic, but it was really not very good business. ICAS was founded in 1968 as a trade and professional association by industry professionals to protect and promote their interest in the growing North American airshow marketplace. As an organization of airshow performers and promoters, ICAS works collectively to keep the industry safe and to provide business standards. The air shows we enjoy are there because of the organization, cooperation, and safety fostered by ICAS. When the excitement of an air show brings someone into aviation, we can thank ICAS for presenting aviation with its best foot forward. After these messages, voters in Washington State are in favor of tax incentives for aerospace companies. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro standby instrument, TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Pat. <music> Labor organizations in Washington state find that more than two thirds of state voters are for legislation to give aerospace companies tax incentives. They believe these incentives are necessary to maintain a strong aerospace labor force in the region. An emergency airworthiness directive had been issued for certain Instra Model 28, 280, and 480 series helicopters. The AD addresses a crack in the spindle that could lead to rotor blade separation. Inspection is required before further flight. The Connecticut State Legislature is exploring establishing comprehensive UAV regulations for operation within the state. They're looking at laws to prevent UAVs from being used as weapons and for dealing with privacy issues. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. When we go to an air show, it's common to focus our attention on the daring pilots and performers. Yet what's going on in the background is an important part of the show. We're sorry to say that the air show industry has lost a legend with the passing of airshow announcer Gordon Bowman Jones. Announcing and narrating airshows since 1970, his cumulative professional aviation experience is diverse. He has served two terms as director of ICAS and was appointed industry marketing chairman of that organization. 
In addition to being a leading international airshow broadcaster at events such as Oshkosh, Paris, and Farnborough, he's achieved professional accreditation as an ICAST certified air and ground operations director. Everyone in the airshow business will miss hearing his voice as the airshow smoke fills the sky. Gordon's family is planning a celebration of his life on April 27th, his birthday. ICAS will provide additional information on this event when it becomes available. Well, that's our program for Thursday, February 19th. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.